Hey there YouTube and welcome back to Tyler's Neighborhood Garage. Okay guys, in all seriousness, I want to take a moment before we get into our main subject matter on this video to uh, give you guys a heartfelt thank you for all the uh, kind comments and suggestions that you posted on this last video that I put up about you know the YouTube commentary thing and uh, first I want to say I hope I didn't come across as sort of like a you know a whiny baby about it uh, it's not it's not something about money and it's not something about trying to be popular and stuff like that I think more than anything I'm just trying to trying to do a better job of reading the audience and reading the people what they like to see uh, when they come here so I hope I didn't give them a wrong impression that I believe in or I'm just trying to be commercial or things like that. That's not the case. Like, so. You got to see it. Back behind you there is a huge flock of birds back there. Back there. That's what that noise is. So if you see me getting carried off here in just a minute, you'll know what happened. I've got this, oh my God, what have I done here? I've got this tripod, this tripod's not high enough. And so it's balanced on the doggone piece of wood. <laughs> so anyway, as I was saying, try to make a video here. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for those comments, and I did read all of them. I may or may not have the time to go back and talk to each one of you personally, but please be assured that even if you do post a comment and I don't read it, I mean, please rest assured that if you post a comment and I don't get to reply to it, that I did read it. You can test me later. You can ask me if I read what you posted, and I bet I can answer Because I do read it. Read it. So, thank you very much. And uh, makes me feel a lot better. So, a few things real quick about that. I think... This is distracting me. Okay? They're like right here in this tree. Like right here. They're looking at me. Anyway, so... I think... Uh, Going forward, we're going to do away with a thing or two about that, especially like doing these long videos, the episodes, that was... So we're going to go back to what we were doing beforehand, and that is just doing single, smaller videos on topical matters, so the, like the restoring the car stuff, that was fun, but it's long, and it took a long time to edit that, so... So we're going to go back to that. And that, you know, that was the thing I started to kind of compete, I guess, do the same thing as people were doing. But in the end, it, it's, again, it's like trying to be like a TV show, and I'm not a bad young TV show. I don't want to be. So, no. so we're going to do that and cut the videos down, make them shorter, make them more digestible. I appreciate those suggestions. I think they're valid. And, uh, so... Howard, I try not to cuss in my videos. I can't guarantee it, but I try hard not to. And, uh, anyway, and the only thing that's kind of interesting, I noticed that some of you guys obviously watch a lot of my videos, but I, ne I don't hear from some of you uh, on certain videos, and I always thought that was kind of fascinating. So, uh, anyway, let's get into this truck, guys. Let's see what we're going to do here real quick. I'm gonna go in and change clothes, get out of my good clothes here, but into my work clothes, obviously. But this truck's been kind of sitting around, and I do use it. This is this '86 Chevy that I bought off Craigslist. You've seen that in the past, but and it runs really good for as old as it is and probably as many miles as it has on it and as greasy as that engine is it runs really good the thing i'm going to deal with today is uh the choke 
is not really working very well. It's got automatic choke, and I know people start to cringe when you start talking about automatic chokes, but I've done, there we go. I've done several videos on automatic chokes, and they're not hard to deal with once you understand the fundamental of their op and the middles of their operation. So this one, I'm pretty certain that this one has an electric choke on it. I think by about this point that GM got away from the hot air chokes. So this should be, I've not even had air cleaner off of it. This should be just a, a common old quadra jet with an electric choke, no electronic uh, feedback or anything like that on it. And what it does is it starts easily, but uh, the issue that I have with it is that it will not stay running when it's cold, it won't idle up. And at first I thought that it was not even working at all, but the other day I actually noticed it was idling fast and then I tapped it and it idled down. So I think it's trying to do something. And what my suspicion is is that somebody's been into the carburetor at some point in the past and they've replaced the, those electric chokes. Normally they sit in the little unit sits in there and they usually have like three rivets in it to hold it in place and you can't adjust them. But if you ever drill the rivets out, you can put these little sheet metal screws back in it and it'll uh, make it so that you can adjust the mixture, the, the choke, where the choke flap is, you know, you can tighten it up more closed or more open. And what it acts like, without looking at it, it acts like that it has been adjusted too lean, as they say. And so it's not really closing all the way, so it's not, the mixture's not rich enough to keep it running. So we're going to look at it, and then after that, if it's still running after I do that, I'm going to change the oil on it. And I got to put a breather filter on it, which I got both those a while back. Somebody, I'll show you and say if somebody had the breather out of it for some reason. Let's get that air cleaner off here. This is creaking, you're going to hear this is my step stool that I'm standing on. This thing's so far in here. Where the wing nut went. Got a nut on it, that's not the wing nut. This has got the heavy duty air filter element, which I think they all came with it when they were a large truck like this. It's got this flame arrestor right here. And right, if you look over here, what's happened is down in here there's this neck, this little rubber elbow that comes out of the valve cover, and it's supposed to go to the breather. Well, this is not the breather. This is this truck used to have this complicated smog system on it that had two small pumps and it had all this tubing and this was the fresh air intake for it. So the breather well, with a little foam element, gauze element, it's supposed to go right here and it doesn't have one. They had it just out to the atmosphere and that's hard on it because that sucks in. It's real good to suck in uh, dirty air. Mud dauber nest there. You too serious? A plug on the back of this thing? Sure is. Guess this thing's got an air temperature sensor too. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? It's had a, what I was taking off there was a little, uh, I guess that's an air temperature sensor. It goes into the air cleaner. This was a, my understanding is this was a California truck, so I guess that was possibly part of that. Okay, let's see what we got. Whoops. I knew I would do that. Come on, you big boob. I'm going to reposition you guys a little bit here. Hang on. <laughs> Try not to dump you over. Okay, so it looks like just a regular old Chevy Quadrajet to me. It's got another dirt dauber nest. This truck's set for a long time, I guess. 
There's another one. It's even got a larva in it. So I'm just kind of looking here to see if I see any broken vacuum lines. And so far they look okay. Carburetor looks, well, look at that. It's hard to have one down in it. Uh, looks original. It's got some crappy heater lines on it. So here's the choke over here, and just as I suspected, it's got, um, uh-oh, it's got screws in it, but look at this. Be something wrong right away. So, <laughs> she's old. Boy. If you look at this choke right here, the plug, the wire is gone off of it. That's an electric choke, right? So, this is it. And it has been taken off or fallen off. My guess is it fell off. And so, <clears throat> it won't work without that. And, now this truck's, I have not touched the accelerator pedal since uh, since I had it running yesterday. So I'm going to just see if the choke actually closes. Yep. So that's fine. It's working like it should. The question will be whether it will now. That's supposed to get 12 volts to it. So what I'll do is I'll probably going to start this thing up and let it run and warm up and see if the choke now operates. Uh, I want to look back and see. Yeah, I was looking there to see if it kicked the idle up. So it looks like it has, so that's good. Very good. Yeah, that's what a lot of you guys that watch these quarter jet videos, this is what you're dealing with. And it's just as simple as that. You know, this thing, if it's electric choke, it has to have power to it. And that's the wire there. And these wires, the circuit to this is just like the one on this Plymouth over here. Um, it's supposed to go through, the power to it is supposed to be routed through the oil pressure switch. Or a switch that is at least plumbed into the oil pressure gallery. And what it does is it keeps, as I've spoken before about it, it keeps the choke from getting any power or any voltage as long as the engine is not running that switch is open so when the engine starts and runs and it closes that switch or closes the contacts then this thing can get power and it starts opening the choke up and again that is strictly for the reason being they don't want you to sit there with the key turned on like listening to the radio or something and it cold and this thing start to get power and open the choke up and then when you go try to start the engine it won't start easily because it's got uh, the chokes already opened up heated up and opened up so if you're wondering what these little things are with the caps on them these funky looking deals here they're not any kind of reservoir that's like an air muffler I think for the dual smog pumps that's what all that is so, so anyway I'm gonna tie wrap this thing secure this to the <clears throat> that's too loose I'm sorry that's too loose it could fall off again so I'm gonna do my best to secure that and on there and we'll see if it works it's supposed to have a black piece to it on that plug and it's gone somewhere way away another one down here and this thing must have really set up a long time I had a field day with this sucker yeah. hey. all right guys what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna run it and uh, see how it acts I'm going to do a cold start on it here. We'll do. Okay, well, before I do the uh, cold start, I'm going to have to work on these vacuum lines a little bit. I got looking around in here and I found a couple issues. There's one down right there that's basically broken. Not even really connected. And then this one back there, you see that one's coming off the left of that little T right there. It comes all the way around and up through here. And then 
you follow it right there and goes right back into the carburetor so it's got one vacuum source connected to another vacuum source that's not right that's supposed to be where the air cleaner connects pretty certain that one is and then uh up there is another broken one come on please see right there it's split open so that needs to be repaired we're probably gonna redo these anyway pretty soon because they're pretty ratty okay i tore out a rat's nest of vacuum lines there and i know some of you guys are going to say yeah 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 that's exactly what you got to do tear it off you don't need it but actually not anymore we did not need some of it because like i said it was to run those vacuum pumps those small pumps rather so it was just extraneous and in the course of time some of these experts that had this truck in the past had hooked vacuum lines in the wrong places and some of them were broken so one on the back of the carburetor was broken the one up there broken the one at the front up here broken so I got them put back like they're supposed to be you got EGR over here which splits this is the um, goes to the charcoal canister the purge for it and it goes down into this TVS which is called a temperature vacuum switch and then on the bottom that's got a source from the carburetor right here goes in and that's because it, this those two things don't need to run when the engine is cold and then they had the distributor ported vacuum signal to the distributor hooked up somewhere I don't know what it was going to it actually went around in a circle basically so I hooked it up to where it's supposed to be at the front of the carburetor and all that we've got one that's not connected anymore you can't really see it down in there but there's a line that kind of terminates right there with my shaky hand and then down there that metal line that's to the EFE valve which is in the manifold over there it's basically a heat riser valve so uh, there's supposed to be another temperature vacuum switch here for that it help, helps to make sure that doesn't run when it's cold well it's supposed to actually if it gets vacuum to it it closes when there's no vacuum to it it opens up so right now we don't want it closing because there's no way to control it it has to have a temperature vacuum switch to control it so that means that the temperature vacuum switch either permits or cuts vacuum when it reaches a certain coolant temperature so we don't have that in place so we're just going to for now we're going to ignore the EFE valve so this is the source to the air cleaner so I kind of rerouted it it was coming from somewhere I don't know they were all all the vacuum lines like virtually none of the vacuum lines were connected where they were supposed to be connected the ones that needed ported vacuum weren't getting it the ones that needed manifold vacuum were getting ported vacuum it's just a mess so I'm going to get my keys and we're gonna pick this thing up and see if it runs any better wasn't running bad before we am gonna see if it's any improvement all right choke is set so meaning it's engaged when I open the throttle up so I'm not gonna pump it I'm just gonna turn the key and that choke might need some fine-tuning it may still stall once but we'll see if we get any improvement on what we had I'm sure didn't forget anything Nope. Think I have. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just reach in that choke just a little bit, which means I'm going to take this, loosen the screws on the housing there, and I'm going to just rotate that element a little bit rearward, or the rich direction. I think it's, it says on it, doesn't it? Rich, we're going to richen it up and see if that will help that start and install and stuff. All right, what I tried instead of adjusting the choke, the choke seems like it's actually in pretty good adjustment. So what I did was I just best with this screw that's on this vacuum pull off here to give it less so it's less aggressive which means it doesn't try to pull the choke doesn't crack, crack it open as 
far when the vacuum gets to it when the engine starts running. So we'll see if that kind of helps out. I think the choke's working. Pretty good to me. I'm gonna change the oil and button it back up and call it good. Thanks for watching.